Welcome back. We have just watched a lecture by Professor Pons about the um, Ucults, an ancient tribe that apparently was very uh, closely tied to the existence of mammoths. Although they have survived um, into present day, apparently by um, using preserved mammoth carcasses. The professor told us to go to his lab to pick up the mammoth doll, which we need to do. There's actually two things we can get here. Which is uh, the flyer, I guess, he passed around about the island of Siberia, spelled with a Y, like the game's name. Let's uh, read that. The Legend of the Ivory Ark. The last ice age ended when the planet warmed up. This sudden climatic change threatened the existence of many animal species including mammoths inhabiting the far northern Siberian wastes. It is said that the Yukol peoples decided to follow Noah's example and built an enormous ark to try to preserve the mammoth's existence. They lived in symbiosis with the pachyderm, which was at the heart of their religious worship. The ship was constructed entirely from mammoth tusks. A small herd of mammoths was installed on board with enormous quantities of fodder, control of the ship was entrusted to a handful of particularly intrepid Yukol clans. Their mission was to take the animals to other lands with pastures more befitting to their survival. One day, fifty summers later, as legends would have it, the Ark returned to its starting point. The Yukols were astonished to find nobody aboard apart from the carcasses of several mammoths perfectly preserved in the ice encasing the ship. The clansmen believed this was a mysterious sign from the gods and they ate the mammoths in a memorable feast. One week later, the Ark set sail once more, carried away by the currents. Again it returned half a century later, with not a soul on board except more well-preserved frozen mammoth carcasses. This mystery continued for a millennia, each time the surprisingly well-preserved mammoths appearing out of nowhere. The Yukols interpreted the phenomenon as a benevolent offering from their dead companions, who were believed to have perished on the Ark's first voyage in some horrendous maritime cataclysm. It is believed that their souls had found eternal rest on a mythical island that a shaman named Siberia. They constructed the whole religion around this belief with rites and customs punctuated by the periodic appearances of the phantom ship and its precious cargo. For centuries, nothing changed the Ark's mysterious cycle. Only the size of the mammoths changed, reducing imperceptibly over time. Until one day, a hundred or so years ago, the Ark returned earlier than expected. It was empty. The Yukols were dumbfounded and utterly confused. The spirits of their ancestors had forsaken them. Everything they had believed in, that had been the bedrock of their culture since the very depths of time, had now lost all meaning. The most fanatical believers noted that the frequency of appearances had in fact increased, and maintained that there was still hope as long as the Ark continued its return journeys from the unknown. Some elder Yukols boasted having seen it several times, but thenceforth, thenceforth Hard word to say for me. THs are not my strong point. Each time the white ship returns, it only offered an empty shell to the despairing eyes of the surviving Yukols. The belief became superstition, and the reality became legend. Okay, that's interesting. I was talking about this island, Siberia with a Y, which is in Siberia with an I, which is not confusing at all. Um, and we want to take the Mammoth Doll back. This will also give you another opportunity to get the, um, the Mushroom Powder if you hadn't gotten it yet. And you do want to do that now to save yourself a lot of time.
But yeah, it seems that some people believe the legend that there are still living mammoths on this mystical island of Siberia. And I could definitely see how Hans would be drawn in by such a legend. If he is as, as obsessed with mammoths as he seems to be, then... The idea of living, breathing mammoths would hold a very strong fascination to him, I'm sure. Which I guess explains why he would be following the Yukol. So I'm guessing he is going to the north of Siberia to try to find members of the Yukol tribe and maybe confirm this legend. Seems pretty unlikely to me. But who knows? Alright, we can head back to the train to wind it and finally move on with our journey. I guess this train is going all the way to Siberia? With an eye, anyway? I doubt it's going to the island, Siberia. Because he would have to find it and build train tracks to it. Well, I guess he might have found it. This was 50 years ago that he was here, so... He's at time. We don't know. Alright, with the train here, we are finally able to... Uh, get to the other side. Which means we can get to the winding machinery, which again does look pretty old. So it does make me wonder again, like, I guess he built this when he was here 50 years ago. In anticipation of the train he would one day build. Unless this train is in fact not unique. But it sure seems to be. It's still less absurd than Amazon, where you're traveling in some kind of... Oh, phone call. Keeps interrupting me. How rude. Hello? Where are you? <laughs> Hi, Dan. I'm in Bergstadt. What? Is that a town? I hope the man you're looking for lives there. Are you coming home soon? From what I gather, it's one huge university with an extraordinary station aviary... If you could only see it, there are trees and birds everywhere. It's so weird here. Sounds like a great place for a bit of sightseeing. So, are you coming back soon? I don't think so. In fact, the train I'm traveling on has some kind of a mechanical problem. We've been forced to stop here. Us? I thought you were alone. Who's with you? Oscar, the train engineer. You're messing around with mechanics now, are you? Don't be so stupid, Dan, please. Oscar is an automaton created by Mr. Varlberg, the man I'm looking for. And he's not any old robot. He's a sophisticated butler type, if you see what I mean. He's a bit obsessive as well. Kate, I don't know what they're feeding you in Europe, but don't you think it's time that you came home? But my mission still isn't finished. To hell with your mission. I don't know why you accepted it in the first place. If you just stuck to the middle of the road, then we wouldn't be in this mess. We? Oui. If there's any mess, it's me who's in it. And while I'm trying to come to grips with strange towns, you, my darling, are sitting at home on your butt. I seem to remember we had nothing against my departure. It was only going to be two or three days, Kate. Please, try to put yourself in my shoes. Your shoes. Not only do I have to fit myself into your diary, but I've got to get myself into your shoes as well. Is there anywhere else Sir would like me to put myself while we're on this subject? Look, I don't want to talk about it. Call me back when you calm down. I was perfectly calm before I picked up your call. I only wanted a few words of encouragement, not your disdain. Was that too much to ask? You can be such a selfish... Takes one to know one, sweetheart. Okay. Dan, um, seems kind of controlling. Anyway... I was saying that it's still not as ridiculous as uh, Siberia, where you're traveling in some kind of 
like hovercraft thing. I need to find floppies everywhere to continue. Which makes no sense from what I remember because you're following in the footsteps of somebody else who used an earlier version of that ho hovercraft that didn't use floppies, so <laughs> there's no reason for those floppies to even be there. At least that's from what I remember. I haven't played that game in many, many years. So I could be wrong. At least here you can sort of reason that uh, there is a possibility that Hans anticipated he was going to build this train and build the winding mechanism for it. Everything okay? Yes, Kate Walker. I am waiting to continue our journey. Um, so am I, and I guess we can, no? That's it, Oscar. We can go. Kate Walker, I must remind you of one of the journey regulations. All objects featured in the train's inventory must be replaced before departure. I don't understand. Something is missing, Kate Walker. Oh my god! The mammoth doll! Please return it to its allocated position, Kate Walker. I'm off, Oscar. See you later. Yes, Kate Walker. All right, we have to put the mouse all back. It's not enough that we just have it on us. Is there like a pressure sensor here that Oscar uses to track? All right. We also have an additional uh, voice cylinder. You can take them from here to listen to them again anytime you want. It looks like there's a spot for one more. Unless there's more on this side that we can't look at right now. But at least one more. Hopefully, Everything uh, okay? Yes, Kate Walker. I am waiting to continue our journey. Hopefully we'll just get that from Hans, who will be at our next stop, which will hopefully be our final destination. Yeah, right. Oscar, if you tell me one more time something's missing, I'll... Everything is ready. Take your seat, Kate Walker. We are leaving. I'll... Okay... Finally! Presumably that door is going to open. Um, did we stop again? Don't tell me it's unwound this soon. Um, I think if we go this way... We end up where we've been before, on this side of the... Um, in, on this side of the platform at the wall. Which enables us to walk all the way back to the university, should we need to do so. More interesting is that we can now also go to the other side, which we could previously not do. I guess that door isn't opening, maybe we were blocked by it. That looks like a Vorlberg key. I wonder how that works. It's a good question. Wait, does that mean Hans was also responsible for the design of this door? Huh. And does no other train <laughs> can go through here if it requires something Vorlberg related? Very strange. Let's see what's here. What are you doing there, Oscar? Oh my god. It is imperative that we comply with railroad and customs regulations, Kate Walker. Oscar, don't you think we could drop the trifling details once and for all? 
We need an exit visa to get beyond the wall, Kate Walker. <sighs> and you wouldn't know where I could get one of them from, would you? There is usually some form of authority stationed at a guard post that is strategically positioned to issue such a visa. Okay, not this again. Oscar, you are... You're hilarious, but you're also very annoying at times. Do you realize, my good man, that as a lawyer charged with an important matter of inheritance, I could sue you for obstructing justice? Kate Walker, we still need an exit visa, in any case. Uh... I don't think reasoning with Oscar is going to work. Oscar, don't you think we've wasted enough time already? You neglected to find the clockwork winding mechanism for the train with sufficient haste, Kate Walker. What nerve! And you refused to lend a helping hand. Help that could have been invaluable to me. I agree, Kate Walker. If you weren't so obsessed by procedure, we wouldn't have had a hitch. I am not entirely convinced, Kate Walker. Oscar, please. Let's get in the train and leave, can we? Yes, Kate Walker. Give me the visa. He is not going to be dissuaded from that, is he? And Kate, like, ran a marathon back and forth in the university to, to get the winding mechanism. Or to get the train to the winding mechanism, I guess. Which, um, you know... Oscar could be a little bit more grateful for. But no, he just wants to block us once again. I don't get why Bert hasn't just disappeared like some of the other options and said it's grayed out. Not sure. I don't suppose you can help me get this visa then? Your non-supposition is correct, Kate Walker. Of course. Everything's always up to us. You do realize, don't you, Oscar, that by preventing me from continuing this journey, you are also depriving yourself of the opportunity to meet your creator, Hans Varlberg. Procedure requires an exit visa, Kate Walker. God, I think I'm going crazy. That is not a requirement, Kate Walker. Only an exit visa is necessary. You know where you can shove that exit visa? Oscar, the automaton that drives this train will be really impatient to leave soon, because he's totally obsessed about punctuality. Yes, Kate Walker. And it's weird, because sometimes, when he drops all that stuff about procedure, he can be so charming and attentive. Please refrain from attributing human emotions to me, Kate Walker. Sure. Okay, see you later, Oscar. Yes, Kate Walker. Okay, um... Guess we need to look for an exit visa. There was nothing this way. Um, maybe the rectors at the university could help, but I sure hope we don't have to run all the way back there. I mean, it is possible, as I've showed you, so you might be tempted to try, but you'd also be wrong. Looks like this is how Oscar got into the customs post. No point. It's locked. There's another door over there in the wall. Hopefully it leads to someone who can help. Or to some place where we can forge an exit visa. At this point, I am not beyond that. Hello? Kate! Oh, is that you? What's going on? Well, I finally got the mechanical train wound, and I hope it's going to take me to Hans Varlberg. I had to sort things out with a couple of weirdo sailors, and they probably ripped me off. But now I'm blocked behind this massive wall. You should see it. It's huge! I'm not talking about that. I want to know what's going on with Dan. What do you mean? I bumped into him at Maggie's Do, and he said you'd argued. That's a bit over the top. Things got a bit heated the last time we called, that's all. No need to go overboard. I don't mean to be Miss Melodramatic, but he didn't seem in such great shape. He had his down-in-the-dumps head on. <laughs> like Dan has a down-in-the-dumps head. 
Well, yeah, when that shock of hair flops over his forehead and his eyes mist up and his eyebrows kind of crease together. I'd never noticed. Maybe I did go a bit too far, but he's got such a goody two-shoes image of me that sometimes I just lose it. And this case is taking up a lot of headspace. I was just looking for a bit of compassion. Well, you sure got mine. So, what's going down? Like I said before, I'm kind of getting somewhere, but it's slow. This Hans Vorlberg guy is getting more and more fascinating by the day. Okay, well, anyway, it doesn't sound like you're bored. Not like back here in the office. Every day is boredom day. It's just no fun without you. When are you coming back? Shouldn't be long, I hope. Look, I've got to go. See you soon. Well, call us again real soon. And be easier on Dan next time, huh? I'll try. Um, I'm definitely not on her side with that. I think Dan deserved that response. Honestly, her entire social circle seems kind of, uh, shallow. Can we go through this gate? No point. It's locked. The answer is no. We can go this way. Nice view of the train. That's a pretty cool window, actually. I don't think I noticed that before. This coal bin for the non-coal-fired train is just empty by the looks of it. I wonder what it's for. Or if it's just there because Hans designed this train and he thought that trains were supposed to have that. Wouldn't surprise me. Um, looks like some kind of office? I don't know. Aha! We found somebody. Good day to you, sir. Captain Melatesta, Commander-in-Chief of the Barikstadt Border Post at your service, madam. Oh, that's why Bird was grayed out and not gone, because we can apparently still talk about it here. We can't ask him for help or talk about the train, though. Wait, but we need to ask him for help with the visa. I guess the mission option will do that. My name is Kate Walker. I've been assigned by my company to find a man who was supposed to be living in Siberia. What a peculiar mission. Taking so many risks for such a futile goal. Captain, to my mind, the military zeal with which you insist on guarding this meaningless wall strikes me as equally futile. I should be offended by your words, miss. But I forgive you, because you are young and unaware of the very real dangers lurking in store for us. Um, what dangers? This is 2002. It's not like the middle of the Cold War or anything. I need a visa to cross the wall and to continue my journey to the east. They told me that you are the only person in a position to issue such a visa. Indeed. This responsibility is part of my duties. However, I am not currently issuing visas because nobody must venture beyond the wall. And why not? It's far too dangerous, in particular for a lady of your standing who is traveling unescorted. Dangerous? What exactly do you mean, Captain? The enemy, miss. The enemy. I've been observing them for several years through my telescope. There's one particular horseman stationed yonder. He's a scout from the invading enemy army, and he's been spying on us. So I have to be extremely vigilant. He knows that I know he's there, you understand? And as long as I keep my eye on him, he won't dare try anything. Are you sure? Please, take a look for yourself. What enemy? I don't understand what he's talking about. Also, who told us that we need to get a visa from him? I guess Oscar sort of implied that there would be somebody who could get it for us, but not him specifically. Maybe you can go back to directors and ask about this and maybe they'll point you to this guy. I am not willing to run all the way back and find out. 
Is the person who takes care of the gate anywhere around? There is no person who takes care of the gate. Believe you me, ma'am. I have been the one and only guardian of this gate since 1968. That year I took over the position from the late Lieutenant Colonel Malatesta, my own father. In that case, can you tell me how the mechanism works? It sure looks complicated to me. Not at all. It is child's play for anyone who takes the time to work out its surprisingly straightforward logic. And from the looks of your locomotive, it shouldn't pose you any problems. Why do you say that? When I caught sight of your formidable locomotive, I immediately said, Heavens, only Hans Vorlberg could design such an engine. And I know what I'm talking about, ma'am, because he invented the gate's original mechanism. It was his last creation here in Barkstadt. So you know Hans Vorlberg? No, I mean, not personally. I was only a baby when he stayed in Barkstadt. My father spoke often of him. And I knew about his inventions. He left very many things behind him. I know. In any case, I noticed that his fantastic knack for inventing has not deteriorated with age. Uh, how's he doing? I don't know. In fact, I don't actually know him. I'm searching for him. An inheritance matter. I hope his train is going to lead me to him. And why not? His inventions are always full of surprises. I guess so. Why can't we talk about the birds exactly? Between the station aviary and this bleak wall, the change in atmosphere is radical, don't you think? It's been a long time since I've been at liberty to judge, miss. My duties forbid me from abandoning my post. Okay, I guess he doesn't leave here very often. Nice existence. You're the only person responsible for guarding this wall. There's not even a rotation or anything. Don't mind me if I retire, Captain. Please, madam. My respects. In that case, I hope Uber Eats delivers here. If you know it existed in 2002. Which it didn't. Um, well, he's very concerned about this enemy of his. Which I guess we can see through the scope. Oh yeah, I, I guess that is uh, somebody on horseback. They are standing very still. How do you even know this is an enemy? It's just a shadow. It could just be somebody who enjoys riding horses over there. Um, if only we could focus this better. I guess there are some controls over here. That's not doing anything. Um. How strange. I can't see a Cossack horseman at all. There's just a dead tree in the middle of an empty plain. That poor captain must have really bad eyesight. Um, or his telescope was just horribly out of focus. Okay, so no horseman, no enemy. Can we please move on? Probably tell him about that. Good day to you, sir. Captain Malatesta. Commander-in-Chief of the Barikstad Border Post at your service, madam. I need a visa to cross the wall and to continue my journey to the east. They told me that you are the only person in a position to issue such a visa. Indeed. This... And why not? It's far too dangerous. Captain, I can assure you that your enemy horseman is in fact simply a dead tree. A tree? <laughs> but that's totally ridiculous. I can tell you have never seen a Cossack before in your life. How long has this Cossack been spying on your wall? For a long time. Yes, a very long time. But they could attack at any moment. We simply cannot tell. And he's been in the same position the whole time? Cossacks are soldiers, miss. They are capable of great resistance and persistence in the face of adversity. Okay, he, um apparently does not believe us. The first part of that dialogue was the same as before, so I skipped it. Don't mind me if I retire, Captain. Please, Madam. My respects. Can't even convince him to look through it again. 
Although if it really is his eyesight, that wouldn't help anyway. Wait a second. Wasn't the uh, Yangalakula mushroom supposed to help improve people's eyesight? Hmm. And yeah, so if you don't have the Yangalakula at this point, you can uh, go back to the university to get it. Which is quite a long walk, which is why I, I suggested you get it when you were there. But that's why you can still go through the train and go back, because you might need it if you did not pick this up earlier. Um, let's see though, what else is here? Look, broken glasses. If they belong to the captain, then he sure has eye problems going by those lenses. Alright, I guess that clinches it that it is his eyes that are the problem. I guess he tried to compensate by focusing the telescope, that's why it was so out of focus. But he still couldn't tell it was not a... Uh, a horseman. How long has the, have these been broken, then? Maybe you should get some new ones. There's also some wine glasses here. I doubt the captain would be willing to just eat our mushroom powder. But if we mix it into his wine... Alright, that worked. I'm assuming. It disappeared, so I'm guessing it's in the glass. There we go. Colonel, sir. Captain, miss. But you have the air of a great officer. Uh, you flatter me, miss. Unfortunately, I'm afraid that we frontier soldiers are often forgotten by the military administration. Ah, oh, there's no justice. I sympathize with you, Captain. Let us forget our worries for a moment and have a little drink together in the name of friendship. Uh, it would be my pleasure, miss, but the regulations strictly forbid it. Come on. A little glass of wine never hurt anybody, and nobody need know. Wine, miss? You are putting me in a very delicate situation. Don't deny yourself, Captain. Just a little glass. I assure you, it is excellent. Well, perhaps just a drop. Here's your glass. To your good health, Captain. And to yours, miss. Hmm. <sighs> it's been a long time since I've drunk wine in such pleasant company. I admit, it is excellent. Isn't it? You wouldn't think it came from Barrickstadt. It is made from the Amazon Forest Sauvignon grape that has been miraculously conserved and cultivated in the station garden. Weren't we supposed well, to not well, tell anybody? Well, the university authorities kept that one to themselves. You know, Captain, it is essential that I continue my journey eastwards. Please don't even think about it. As I've said, it's extremely dangerous. The enemy is spying on us. Perhaps your Cossack horseman isn't quite what you thought. Perhaps it's just a dead tree twisted into a strange shape. You should take another look. You never know. Go on, Captain. Give it a try. So be it. I will make this concession to the fairer sex, miss. But it does seem to be quite ridiculous. Incredible. How is this possible? By what strange magic? How could I have been so wrong for so long? The enemy was only a tree. I'm so ashamed. It's not that bad, Captain. It's only human to make mistakes, after all. A tree. Nothing but a dead tree. Pull yourself together, Captain. It's okay. 
And now I suppose there's nothing stopping you from issuing me a visa? Yes, of course. There is no more danger. All these years. And now the Cossack has gone. There is nothing left to watch. Captain, you should be delighted. From now on, you don't have to stay pinned to your watchtower. Travel can start up again normally. You will be able to resume your regular duties, like issuing entrance and exit visas. You are right. I will sign you a visa to cross the wall frontier immediately. A thousand apologies. Here, miss. Authorization to cross the border. This document authorizes the holder with belongings to pass through the border wall gate. Captain Malatesta, the gate commander. Warning. Beyond the ramparts, conditions for journeys into the eastern territories are filled with uncertainty and reputed to be hazardous. As a consequence, the wall authorities cannot guarantee the physical safety of the traveler and decline all responsibility in the event of any incident. Okay. Works for me. Thank you, Captain. And keep your eyes open. <sighs> Miss, if we could keep this between ourselves, please. For the sake of my honor, you understand? You have my promise, Captain. All right. Exit visa in hand. We can finally move on, I hope. But we'll have to do that in the next video.